Today we'll be taking a local train from Saint Maurice in Switzerland to Annemasse in France. This train will go along the lake of Geneva with some stunning views over the lake. But it's not just a train with some stunning scenery, it's also a fighter connection that connects the towns of Saint Maurice via, for example, Montreux, Lausanne, and Geneva to Anamas, what is just across the border in France from Switzerland. Join me on board of this kind of different international train. It's really a local train that goes from a small town in Switzerland that doesn't play any role for international connections to here to Anamas in France. And here you find some, oh, this is a junction, so you find some good connections from here. This is an important station for regional connections if you need to change trains. I hope you like this video or this is a helpful video to you. If so, please give me a thumbs up and if you'd like to see more trip reports about more sustainable ways of transportation, mainly focusing on cross-bordering and or long distance travel, then hit that subscribe button. But for now, let's get this video on the track and let's roll the intro. saint Maurice in the French-speaking Swiss canton of Valais. This railway station that serves a town of approximately 4,500 people hosts approximately 6,500 passengers per day. At least according to the data I found online. Maybe that's wrong, but apparently there are some really nice tourist attractions near this spot. So I guess this explains why the number of people who use this station is way higher than the people who live in this town. Unfortunately, I didn't have a lot of time, so I couldn't visit the town or the sites. But if you know if it's worth to visit it, let me know in the comments. The railway station is not that big or special, it's right over here. Within the railway station there are some shops and services, for example a hairdresser, as you can see here on the left. Even though this isn't the most obvious spot to start a trip report for an international train, I'll be taking the entire route for the train to Annemasse today in France. This train also calls a bigger towns like for example Montreux, Lausanne and Geneva. This here is an indoor waiting room and something else I noticed was this tourist office. I did this trip while I was visiting the Swiss travel market. I am working for a tour operator as a travel agent and basically at the Swiss travel market lots of buyers, so from travel agencies and tour operators and suppliers meet so we can develop more nice new products. And even though I had a really nice trip before the whole event thing, if you have a lot of meetings you have less time to discover. What is a bit ironic actually. However, this didn't stop me from making some extra videos while I was in Switzerland anyway. And if you travel to France with these trains, you can do this with a Swiss pass. I was traveling with the use of a Swiss pass that was overhanded because, well, I did a pre-tour as well. This here is my train today that will take me to Annemasse just across the border in France. Even though this is a regional train, you can't reserve seats. At the displays at the platform, the composition will be displayed, so you know more or less what area of the train will be where at the platform. The train we'll be riding on is a KISS train made by the Swiss train manufacturer Stadler. You find these trains quite a lot within Europe, both for regional trains, but they have also been modified for some long distance trains. For example, Westbahn is using these trains for longer distances. On the outside, based on the numbers 1 and 2, you can see where the first and the second class is. And an extra yellow line indicates exactly where the first class is within these trains. Apart from that, some icons like for example a bike icon do indicate what facilities can be found where in the train. At the front and at the side there are digital displays that will host the final destination for these trains. So you know you're in the right train. The railway station of St. Maurice is not being served by long distance trains, they will just pass by. There are even some long distance trains that will just pass by, they go to Italy. But hey, we'll be taking this local train to France today. And even though this is a local train, it's a local express train, what basically means it won't stop at all railway stations. The layout is pretty simple. The second class comes in a 2x2 two two configuration and it's really open. This is what you might expect of these types of trains. 
you find clear displays at the end of all compartments that will host route information. And at the upper deck, both at the beginning and at the end, you find some seats that have a different layout. For the train tour, I just walk from one part of the train via the upper deck to the other part and I walk back via the lower deck. This here is the first class. The first class comes in a 2 by one configuration and you have way more space. This is compared to other first class products in Switzerland and France much better than the second class. However, it's still a regional train and there's no extra service. There's not a lot of service in regional trains anyway, but the comfort level of first class is rather good. Even though there's nothing wrong with the comfort level of the second class. Personally, I mainly travel in second class and this is a good product, especially in Switzerland. It saves me a lot of money, but of course, when I can travel first class without any extra costs, I don't mind to travel in first class and that was also the case during this trip. Garbage bins can be located at several spots within the train but are not directly near the seats. CCTV is available in these trains for extra safety for the passengers. Although in Switzerland my experience is that the trains are really safe in general. Staff is always present as well in Swiss trains. Where the higher deck gives mainly seats in a just standard train layout, and in Switzerland that means the majority of the seats are facing each other, the lower deck has some more variety. For example you find some spots where you can park extra luggage, your bike if you're traveling with a bike, and this is also better accessible. The toilet within these trains is also located at the lower deck. Speaking of which, there's only one toilet within these trains, and this toilet is also an accessible toilet. Like pretty often in European trains, accessible toilets can also be used as a nursery space for babies, as you can see over here. Everything worked, um, when I hold my hand in the right spot at least, and it was clean, that's most important. Right next to the toilet, there's some extra space for people traveling in a wheelchair for example, and this is also where the second class comes in a 2 by one configuration, so the aisles are a bit wider, so it's easier accessible for everybody. There's a small section of the first class at the lower deck as well, but this isn't much different from the first class I showed you at the upper deck, apart from the fact that there is more space for luggage over here. And there are even some airline style seats. That's not pretty common in Swiss trains by the way. For Swiss trains you find quite a lot of airline style seats within these trains. Like I already mentioned, there are lots of screens that will host very clear route information and also information about changes along the way. Announcements are being made in at least French and English and pretty often there's also another third language. We're still in Switzerland though, where they speak four languages. For now, let's do a seat tour and I'll start off in the second class. You find power sockets right under the seats and at all windows, both at the upper and lower deck and both at first and second class, you find sunscreens. Because these are double deck trains, the overhead luggage tracks are not that impressive and that's the least I could say, but between the back ends of the seats, you can also store quite a lot of luggage. There are some airline style seats and the amount of leg room is quite decent. I'm very tall so it might look tighter than it is. For now let's review the first class that comes in a 2 by one configuration and is slightly more comfortable and you have way more space. This is how the composition is of the rare airline style seat and over here you find a tray table you can fold out. What is really nice and I think this would be great to see in the second class as well. And the rest isn't that much different, it's just more comfortable. For now, I'll show you some views from the train, and while I do this, I give you some background information about the route. I'll get back to you when the train arrives at the railway station of Geneva.
I got out at the railway station of Geneva. However, the next day, I traveled to the final station for Anamas. The last section, so between Geneva and Anamas, I did this in a different kind of train. I won't do an in-depth train review, but these are the trains I had for this section of the route. This is a train operated by the France National Railway Operator, SNCF, and this train will go along the Lake of Geneva as well, but on the other side. However, on the French side, the railway tracks will go until more or less halfway the lake. So you can't see the lake that well from the train. And apart from that, the railway line is a bit further from the lake located as well. I'll take this train until the railway station for Anama. However, where my train that I had before was a regional express train, so that train didn't stop everywhere. This specific train calls literally everywhere. And in Geneva, this feels more like a metro than a train, because a big part of this regional railway line has been built underground with underground railway stations. Well, once again, I won't do an in-depth train review this time. And because this train was mainly underground, the views from the train were not that spectacular. But I'll show you what I shot. Even though the railway station of Anamas is not that big, for regional trains this plays kind of an important role. Because if you want to travel, for example, from Geneva to Annecy in the French Alps, you need to change trains here. Basically, we're in the outskirts of Geneva right now. And this railway station also feels much bigger and much more alive than the railway station of saint Maurice, where we started this journey. Directions have been given crystal clear, and typically for French railway stations, everything has been announced with icons, but of course also with texts. These texts are always obviously in French, and the second language is always English. And in this railway station, the third language was Italian. Track numbers have been indicated with letters, and right at the front of the railway station, there is a convenience store. It seemed like this was quite a newly developed area and they were building lots of new buildings around the railway station as well. So I think there's a lot of development going on over here. Like I already mentioned, there's a small convenience store within the railway station. And right next to the convenience store, there's also a place where you can work remotely. I really like to see this a bit more. There's also a waiting room inside where there's free Wi-Fi available, some spots where you can charge your mobile devices, and there are vending machines for both the France and the Swiss railway companies. Apart from that, there are also some vending machines for coffee, snacks and drinks. Near the railway station there are some bus stops, and if you walk for approximately 10 minutes, you also find the tram stop for trams that go back into Geneva. Cross-bordering public transportation is very good connected over here. Thank you for watching. I hope you liked it or this has been a helpful video to you. If so, please give me a thumbs up. I really appreciate this and this helps to, well, recognize the algorithm of YouTube that this is a video they should suggest. And this way, hopefully, I can convince more people to travel about a more sustainable way of transportation. Um, if you'd like to see more trip reports, then hit that subscribe button. Before we really end up this video, one last message. Once again, thank you for watching. I hope you liked it. If you did so, give me a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more, then hit that subscribe button. If you don't want to miss anything, also hit the bell icon. I mean, it's free. You can also unsubscribe if you don't like it after all. If you'd like to see more trip reports, of course, you can find them on this channel. But in the description of this video, you find a link to a map. And on this map, you can find all videos.